Mr. Charles, how many more days uh, does the shutdown need to prolong for you to downgrade? Well, first of all, I, we wouldn't uh, downgrade or review the U.S. racing, I think, based on how long the shutdown lasts. Um, I don't know that I have any better idea of how long it will last than uh, any of your other commentators. Um, I think what we said in our comment, which we put out on Friday, is that uh, what the, the shutdown tells us is that you know, there is a bit of a problem with the coherence of policy making in the U.S. Um, it, that's, that's really the concern that we have. And then I think we went on also to discuss the, the debt limit. Uh, and the debt limit is really the, the issue that we're more concerned about. But it, this is not a new issue. It's something that, you know, recurs uh, periodically. But, uh, it, you know, it's a, it's a tail risk that, that we're concerned about. Yeah, I'm, I'm sort of surprised to hear your warning about it now, because in 2011, your competitor, S&P, actually cut the U.S. AAA rating because we bumped up almost against that debt limit and some of the political dysfunction that was going on then. So, so why didn't you do it then? Why now? Um, well, it, we actually did have the U.S. rating on, on Racing Watch negative in 2013 um, when there was a similar sort of a debt limit issue, but sort of combined with a shutdown. Um, so we, we have in the past uh, sort of recognized the, the urgency of these, these issues, and, you know, we still do. Um, but I think, you know, for us, out of shutdown and, and debt limit, it's definitely the, the debt limit that has us slightly more concerned. But, you know, as I said, it, it is something that is more of a tail risk. Charles, it's, it's interesting because if you're kind of judging creditworthiness or solvency of the issuer, it, it, it's a bit of a tricky equation, right? I mean, the government prints the currency and all the rest of it and probably would be paying back uh, any debt payments that were perhaps skipped, even in the worst case scenario. Um, so how do you think about what the rating conveys to investors? Because as Sarah was talking about the 2011 episode, I mean, yields kept going down during that whole crisis. They bought our debt. <laughs> yeah, I, I sort of go back to this point. It's really about the, the credibility of policymaking. Um, and, uh, you know, our concerns with the U.S. are not just short term. They're also medium term. They're to do with the, the fact that, you know, why, why do we care that, that the U.S., you know, has credible policy making. It's because there are challenges in the, in the medium term. You have the deficit rising, uh, sort of growing mandatory spending. You know, how's that going to be dealt with? Growing interest burden. Um, and so, you know, that, there are problems that, you know, at some point the, the, the system will have to deliver solutions to. And I, I think our concern is that, you know, based on, you know, what we see today um, and, and sort of previous evidence, then, you know, that's something that, that concerns us a little bit. You know, wh when will it be done? Charles, looking outside of the U.S. Uh, in 2019, which other major economy is at most good, most at risk of a downgrade? Um, I think, well, just looking, for example, at the, the AAA, we, you know, all of our AAA ratings are on are on stable outlook. So it's, it's it's a group of now 11 economies that have sort of been whittled down. You know, the U. S. the U. Uh, UK, France, um, Austria have lost uh, AAA status, but. Um, the, the group that we have is, is pretty is pretty solid, so I'm Very quickly, I'm not concerned about any of the AAA. Sorry to cut you off. I just want to know if you do downgrade AAA for the U.S., does that also trickle down to states and municipalities? Does that mean they get downgraded as well? Uh, I think those would be reviewed sort of on a on a case by case basis. It's not it's not automatic, but yes, I think if yeah, the, no one can be rated better than the federal government.